Hey, how's everybody doing? It's Taisha back. Oh my gosh, I missed y'all so much. It's been a minute since I did a live video and I just, I couldn't just come out here and talk to you like really, really seriously. I had to invite one of the funniest brothers I know out of San Diego, California. We have Kamal Johnson over here from Kamal Johnson Entertainment channel here on YouTube. I, I know y'all are going to enjoy him, enjoy the, his delivery, everything. Can you tell everybody about yourself? And then also talk to your audience because we're live on both channels. Yeah, what's good with y'all out there? I'm Kamal. Uh, I'm from Oakland, California, but I moved out here to San Diego in 05 for school. And then we ain't going to talk about school. San Diego State, uh -uh, we ain't going to talk about them. But basically, I started YouTube, doing YouTube like two years ago. And four years ago, I got into directing, videography, stuff like that, photography. And people was always like, oh, you should be in front of the camera. Oh, you kind of funny. I never think I'm funny. I always think I'm like, I'm being kind of serious. But I guess my delivery and how I look at things be making it sound funny. So You got to laugh and keep from crying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? So, yeah. And then um, we're going to talk about you. Taisha, we, you know, where we met at. Where, we met, tell them where we met at. <laughs> we met at this YouTube uh, San Diego meetup, and yes. to be honest, it was only like three black people in there. And <laughs> <laughs> yo, for real, it was you, me, and uh, Marlon, my own boy Marlon. also. Marley, yep. <laughs> That's it. The rest was. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, it was just so good because at the time I was living in Washington and I had actually flew down. If y'all remember on my channel, um, I flew down to San Diego for a job interview. I was trying to get the hell up out of Washington State. So yeah. I flew down to San Diego for a job interview and I did the video about the Airbnb from hell where I stayed with the crazy cat lady. Oh, well, I was all, yes, I didn't tell you. Well, I did a video I about it. I was at the airport and I'm like, man, this Airbnb is some bull. This chick accused me of letting her cat get eaten by coyotes and i'm like i'm about to beat this chick a word because she was just going off just flipping out i'm like man she got one time to call me your name i'm <laughs> i'm sleeping in my car for the rest of the time I'm down here in san diego but i have met you uh, i met you and the rest of the the youtubers of san diego the night before that happened so i was in a good mood but if you had met me after that it was not pleasant because i was that was hell up out of san diego that was in san diego that must that have been like in east county somewhere Oh my gosh, I'm going to look up where I stayed and I'll send it to you, but I know I drove some ways out. Like I was close to uh, Camp Pendleton. You were close to Camp Pendleton? That's up north? Yeah, they'd be on some, some BS up there too. Yeah. I thought you was in this place called uh, Clan T. <laughs> I'm gonna look it up and get you the exact location because I, I, know, I know I wasn't too far from... Um, Cause I met up with some friends at what is it, uh, Coronado or something like that. So yeah, I wasn't too far from over there, but I'll definitely let you know because that was some bull. But I really enjoyed how y'all got together, the YouTubers of San Diego meet up. And you know, I noticed after everything happened last year, y'all still kept meeting up online, training yeah. ideas. It was it was y'all who told me about TikTok and you know different strategies to to like grow my channel and network. And that's one thing I miss. I'm like is having people having a studio to go to. Let's hey let's 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 get some branding photos. Let's change interchange ideas. You also did radio, so you are just like, I, I really relate to you. One thing I respect about you is your consistency because oh, yeah. speaking, and we're here to talk to y'all tonight about the trials and tribulations of YouTube. Uh, oh, other YouTubers have a title like what I wish I knew before I started YouTube, but we mm -hmm. just gonna talk about the trials and tribulations. Uh, I have been on YouTube now for three going on four years. Ooh. And yes. <laughs> So it's been some ups and downs, learn some things, you know, you grow. When I look back at my first videos, I was actually in Hawaii before I shaved my hair off. And actually people, a lot of people don't know my first YouTube video, I was, I was supposed to have a channel reviewing wigs and that would not have worked out too well because <laughs> I eventually shaved off my hair and, you know, I didn't go that route anymore, especially living down here in Georgia, the wigs stink, you know, I want to. <laughs> 
go on record to apologize to all the brothers and <laughs> people I've known in my life. And I'm so sorry that my wigs were stinking. I just couldn't smell it. But as you see, I'm doing things better. Okay. Yeah, them wigs is no good. They be smelling like corn chips. Like yes. after a while. <laughs> I imagine it's what bowling shoes smell like. You know, it's oh just it's God. really horrible. And you will you will not find an, another black woman on YouTube to say that. But the wig stink. It doesn't matter what you do, the wig stink. And I um yes, but my <laughs> my, my channel initially I was told that my channel would not do too well because I did not have a particular niche. I did not stay yeah. on this one topic. But I was like, you know, I'm not just one sided. I want to talk about, you know, maybe my hair. Let's go cook something. Let's go vlog somewhere. Let's go do this. So it did slow me down as far as growth because some of the YouTubers I started with who had a makeup channel or had a hair channel or had a channel ab about this, they gained a following really, really quickly. Mine, yeah. you know, those videos that I had that were either evergreen, su such as um, the timeshares, and then actually, actually, I've been on YouTube for four years. Three years ago is when uh, I did the video about the dude that went to North Sentinel Island, and I okay. did that right around this time. I was reviewing my Instant Pot and cooking turkey wings, and I saw this dude went to North Sentinel Island, mess with those people. I, I was off work that day. I drank a couple mm -hmm. mimosas, and yeah, that video like took off. Like I was getting like a thousand new subscribers in like a day. I'm like, oh my mm -hmm. gosh! So. Yeah, my channel is a little, it, it's been all over the place and I've yeah. been able to really show you the different sides of me. Okay. And now those who I started YouTube with, who, you know, stuck with one particular niche, they're now doing vlogs. They're now doing food. They're doing grocery hauls. They want to go to the gun range. So mm, okay. you'll grow as you grow. So can you tell us about how, how you started YouTube and, and how your journey has been uh, since you start, started YouTube? Uh, I, well, I had a YouTube channel like five or six years ago mm -hmm. and I was doing the, you know, the videography thing and I was just putting up random videos here and there. And then two years ago, like me and my one homeboy trust, we was talking about doing like a music video review show, like Beavis and Butthead. That's <laughs> what they did. They sat around yes. and watched music videos, reviewed it, and then went to work and did other dumb shit. So we, we talked about it and was like, all right, let's just make it. So that was two years ago. And then six months after that, I uh, did another show with my homeboy, Byron. And mm -hmm. we wanted to be more like, you know, current events, um, political stuff, stuff that we deem important. Mm -hmm. Kind of like how like Deces and Miro does on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. We were trying to bring that flavor over here to the West Coast. Right. And then after that, I was like, I always liked John Oliver and his style, how he delivered news and that ordeal, whatever. But it's like people that look like me don't deliver the news like that. And I'm like, let me fill that void. So that's what the uh, the Gab show came about. And plus, mm -hmm. who don't like movies and shows? Right. Remember, uh, what was it? Was it Cisco and Ebert? Ebert and clear, yeah. yeah, they review movies. So I was yeah. like, I'm about to do that. I like yeah. movies. So that uh comes in a segment with the gab and then memes. Mm -hmm. Memes are everywhere. Yes. <laughs> I, and they're funny. I've yes. never seen anybody review memes before. Mm -hmm. Like ever. I think more people should review memes. Yes. Memes, memes are absolutely like who comes up with this? And you know what? The resharing of memes and resharing yeah. vi of video clips because that's what happened last year. I made a video parody of something, a real life event that happened just to raise awareness to let people know, like, hey, y'all need to start, you know, Garney Grill out here. Be safe. You know, there are yeah. threats. Don't get caught up being a soft target. Soft and target, next, yep. next, next thing I know, Earthquake shared my, my, my video, Snoop shared it twice. All the comedians shared it. Like it went around. It went viral. And so that was last year, right? That was last year. Uh, yeah. I, I, I recorded that uh, the day after Thanksgiving. I was taking some 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 orders to the post office, and it's just that I couldn't sleep because it happened. And that's one thing too. Like with me and my life, I believe that my my purpose is service. 
and speaking yeah. up for those who do, do who do not have a voice. So with that incident, it just it made me so mad, you know. And you know, I have this 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 heart where everybody's my brother, my sister, and I'm just like, you know what? That could have been my sister. That could have been been me. But you know what? That is my sister. And so I just I spoke out about it. It took off, and it's like, yep. wow, okay, you know, like. Yep. These I mean, are our current events, but the memes, the stuff like that, it was shared. And, you know, memes do raise awareness. You just have to make, yeah. make sure you verify the information in it. But, you know, the memes are, are just great. I, I love them. They're it, incredible. It reminds you know? me of, what is it, the, uh, what, is, what we used to call it, the demotivational posters or uh, <laughs> pictures in the office. <laughs> yes. Man, that'd be so funny. Yes. But, um, I know yeah. Sure question about you know your 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 uh, news and that's one thing that has been attacked in the past year this whole fake news there's certain titles you can't use in your videos certain things get you demonetized get you deplatformed you know yeah. so you talk to us have, have you experienced in, any of, of that in your co content delivery on tiktok for sure they be silencing the hell out of my videos god damn oh my goodness <laughs> YouTube, the only time they did it on YouTube was when I talked about the T-Virus 19. Yeah. You say that word, they'd be like, it, oh. I call it Climax 19. That's what I, that's <laughs> what I call it, Climax 19. <laughs> climax 19. Yeah. Nice they they really gave me, though. They gave me a whole nice little email and was like, mm -hmm. you know, you can't be using that word and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, I'll get around it. But other than that, YouTube hasn't really like silenced my videos. They limit my ads though. Yeah. Because they'd be like profanity and stuff like that. They'd be like, strong use of profanity. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, limit it. It don't matter though, because I'm I'm here to give the news to mm -hmm. people that sound and look like me. That's how we talk. So that's one thing that you know that's that's really important because I was a sailor. I know it's not late lady like to say cuss words and stuff like that. But like I say, uh, when the spirit moves me at times and it's something, you know, that's going to if if mother fudge cake ain't cutting it, then I'm going to have to say what I need to say. But I know, you know, I'm a mom, you know, and, yeah. you know, I, I I try to clean it up at times. But uh, with with the profanity as well as TikTok, like like my oh, first God. video on TikTok, it was actually Mrs. D. Penda, your fellow San Diego YouTuber that, you know, told me how she, she built her following off of TikTok. So nice. I'm like, cool, I'm going to go check it out. Went to TikTok, my first video I uploaded, they did not let that joke pass. <laughs> and that's when later I made a video talking about TikTok because non-Black content creators who uploaded uh firearms videos they they're up they're up i have a video right here on this channel where i sh i put the proof in there like look yeah. these people over here shooting shotguns revolvers all that i upload a video speaking of the safety or you know how to properly use one i'm not even shooting it i'm, I'm probably just in in the house using it as as a prop it got, got zero views then you also had those over, over there who would use the n-word um oh just Ramp it. Reenacting slavery, like they'll they'll have the green screen with cotton in the back, and so that. that <laughs> Wait a minute, time out. Yes, they reenacted I, slavery, and they ain't, they ain't taking those videos down. Nope, I they stayed up long enough for me to download it and upload it on my video. I uploaded a video about TikTok about a year ago. It's on my channel, and I'll talk about you know I was leaving it, and as a result, I sp I spoke with some some other content curators, and and they're like, Taisha, we, we we know what you're doing, what what you are doing is great. Try to get around it doing this. You know what I'm saying? You know, mm -hmm. leave the platform for what it's doing. And because TikTok was doing something Ill illegal with our information. I'm not sure if you logged in recently, but now you can put in your information to be part of like this class action lawsuit. So I'm like, hey, what 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 goes around come come right back at you. So um it I should be on, on your uh notification screen. But um, yeah, that was the one thing the the, the shadow ban, and because you say swear words, because you know you can say what you want to say, but it's like okay, this is our platform. It's not advertiser friendly. We take you down, but other people say and do a hell of a lot worse. Yeah, they are the favorites, maybe because they they do content like, hey guys, <laughs> come to my channel, come to my channel, guys. <laughs> you hella bubble gum. They get oh my goodness. Up. 
they get to stay up because I'm pretty sure if I was up over here on some on some old type stuff, you know, I'll be up there. But I'm like, you know what? I just have to be be me. Okay, I'll yeah. try. To, I'll try to clean up the cuss words every now and then and do that. And but I'm I still want to talk about self defense. I still want yeah. to talk about my view because they want to put celebrities out there, and I'm like, they don't speak for me. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not me. I'm that's not what I do. I'm I'm not greasing myself up and gaining a hundred pounds and sit here booty <laughs> butt cheeks naked and you know play the harmonica. That's not what I do. Okay, no, no. so if that's <laughs> what I want to keep putting out there, go right ahead. But I want to do me. It's just that it sucks because you know my my reach is restricted, is limited. Exactly. Because that's that's not what they want to put out there to showcase as a black woman. I pride myself being that black woman that you will not see, you know, promoted like that. So I appreciate everybody who's here supporting. So shout well, out to you. Thank you. Oh yeah. Now I wanted to say like TikTok. What I don't like about it. They be promoting these challenges as actually dangerous to impressionable minds. Yeah, they had that one challenge. Remember, it was in the schools. They were yes, fucking destroying killing the school. it. Mm-hmm. Destroying the schools. Yep. Destroying it. Yeah. And it's like, first of all, that's vandal vandalization, which mm-hmm. they could go to jail for. Yeah. Juvenile hall. You feel me? Second, mm-hmm. it's dangerous because if somebody in there, you doing that shit. You feel me? The other one is, you know, assault a teacher. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. yeah. They let that stuff circulate. Even the crate challenge, <laughs> as silly as it was, <laughs> as they, they let the crate stay up there. They're like, oh, we're going to take down anything pertaining to the, the, the crate hashtag is gone. But after mm-hmm. months, though, it got hundreds of thousands of views and, and followers behind it. You know, they still let it roll. So, yeah. Now, I already know they ding my TikTok because <laughs> I think my second video I was talking about uh, Money Mitch McConnell. I was, I, was talking, <laughs> I was like, look at this guy. We're out here scamming. Nope, they silenced me quickly. So I think yeah. they, they be having like ding words or probably, I don't know. I could be wrong, but I mm-hmm. think they be having like uh, dings on accounts for like, yes. look at those accounts closely. YouTube has has that as well because I tried to do a live stream. I scheduled it because I wanted to talk talk about the disgusting black female that the media is trying to say, like, hey, you need to need to do this. Don't don't shave and just be just nasty. I'm like, who does this? Why are you telling people like, okay, don't shave and don't do this and free bleed and I'm like, no, this is the making of of a disgusting female. We're not going to do this. So I didn't even have it in the title. It's the thumbnail. They have, you know, programs or software that that can read, you know, text and words on your thumbnail. And they'll silence it that way because I didn't even get a chance to record it. They said, we want YouTube to be a community for everybody. We're taking it down. I was like, oh, so I had to try to reword it, you know, a whole different way and use a different uh, uh, thumbnail. But, But people were... You know, um, setting their notifications to you know to chime in and talk about that because we yeah. reject that. We do not accept that. We're we mm-hmm. we do what they're putting out there for shock value. That is not black women, and I will not stand by idly because you know when I was active duty, when you go overseas, you know to, to places where they don't really see black people like that. The the first thing that comes to mind, especially when when I was in in a, I was in Rota, Spain. And okay. I was walking shopping, and then it was these guys with with a camera. They they pointed me. They're like Beyonce, Beyonce, and I'm like, no, I'm not. Yeah, but that's but they're not calling me that. That's just that, that's the the name they know. Like it was the first time they saw a black person, and I'm like, okay, cool. But if they see nasty images of us and and bad images, they're gonna think think that. And I'm just yeah. like, you know, we represent each each other, and we should represent each other in the best light. Best light as possible, because like. Imagery is key. How we present ourselves out to the world is how the world's mm-hmm. gonna perceive us. Mm-hmm. So I get it. Like Beyonce is a freaking mogul. So yeah, they hear the name, they see a black person, they like that's Beyonce. Yes. No matter what to them. So uh-huh. I get it though. Like, and they are trying to depict a black woman in a certain light. We ain't gonna say certain names, you feel me? But y'all know who the hell I'm talking about. Right. You know I mean? It's like I don't know, it's sickening. 
So mm-hmm. after you notice the 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 ban on on, on TikTok, the, the shadow ban, when when you would do certain topics, especially on politics and stuff like that, how did you overcome that, or what is your approach now if you're still doing that that type of content? I'll be honest with y'all. I still do the same thing because some videos slip through the crack. Mm-hmm. And those videos that slip through the crack, they'd be like, okay, I like how you're presenting stuff. Let me go see other stuff. And then the, the videos are still up on YouTube and stuff. Mm-hmm. The TikTok is for clips. So they see those clips. they like, okay, let me go check out the YouTube channel. They see the videos on YouTube and they'd be like, oh, okay, he really spilling the real shit. So yep. I don't stop it. I don't try to get around it because certain videos don't slip through the crack and as as the numbers grow after mm-hmm. a while the audience is going to just reshare it reshare it share it here share it there i see it all the time with certain accounts where i'm like oh shit that usually would get banned yep. if i'll post it but <laughs> if they're big enough and they post it it don't get banned so it's hope so i say never deter your creative like process or your creative output because then you just stifle yourself and you kind of silence yourself you know that's so important to be authentically you because I've done just about everything I'm on my channel from shave my head. I've done the ugly cry. They saw me move across country. You know, I lived in the hotel for um, a couple of weeks. It was like, like, like two weeks, but I've taken my, 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 my viewers in, in mm-hmm. and into like, into my family. Like, Hey, yeah. we're going to go on this adventure. You can see my growth. You, you, you can, you know, you have video proof. Am I living up to what I'm telling y'all? Am I telling y'all to do something that I would not do? You know, yeah. and I'm living a completely different life online than I am in, in reality. So have you had any experiences with that where um, you were either made to believe you needed to, to change up your style, deliver your content differently? Or have you came in contact with those who are just putting on the act for the camera, but do something completely different in real life? Is is that what YouTube wants us, us to do? Well, I... I personally haven't met somebody that's like putting on for the camera, but mm-hmm. that's because I'm I'm kind of like an introvert. I do yeah. need to get out there more. No, you <laughs> I'm like in the crib a lot. So, but I'm getting out there more and more. But the um the first part where it's like, did I have like people tell me maybe you should do it this way or why are you doing that? Yeah, I've had that. Mm-hmm. Like friends. And not only when it comes to YouTube or the podcast and stuff is like I also do fashion design and I had a certain design and my mm-hmm. one my one homie was like why are you promoting that or putting that on there and it's like bruh relax this is me expressing myself right you know so I I say never tone it down fuck all that yeah you tone it down it's like what's the point what is the point yeah. you know so and like I see how you do it. You don't tone it down. <laughs> and I love that shit. I'm like, hell yeah. I Thanks. love every minute of it. So I say I I never try to change because if you change people going, they're gonna see that. They sense that mm-hmm. out, you know? It's like but well, um I can talk about like the change that I I have experienced, like this this past year has been just a great year for me. And um yeah. like I, I, I found a peace. I'm finally living somewhere where I want to be. I'm around great people. You know, I'm just, you know, doing it. You know, I, I have nothing to complain about on, on, on that part. But yeah. yet it's, it's still in me to, you know, the, the interest I have. I still talk talk against certain things, certain, you know, manipulative people and just be a scams, you know. Yeah. Oh, my God. The scammers out here. Oh, Jeez, Shout out to uh, Kareem, Black Voltron Reloaded. And I just asked the question, like, have you met any other YouTubers in, in real life? And so, like I said, I met you and the uh, YouTubers of San Diego in real life. Here's another one right here, Brother Al Too Smooth, the Mountain Biker. Hey. Yes. Oh, my gosh. His channel is amazing. Like, you're watching a movie, a uh, uh a really good movie on mountain biking for, like, 20 minutes. And he just... The editing, he's a, he's also a DJ. He's up okay. in Georgia, like I said. Georgia is my home. Georgia, my mind. I'm never leaving. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> I have ran into him, and they gave me an idea. 
Um, I, I want to do a video and, and, you know, let people know who my favorite YouTubers are, who, who, um, like, although I'm subscribed to like a lot of people, YouTube yeah. algorithm only, you know, gives me certain content, you know, so I try to save stuff to watch later and, you know, have, have like a playlist on, as I'm cleaning the house up or doing busy stuff. But yeah, that is to come my favorite YouTubers and Al, you made the list. Kamal, you're going to be on there too, because it's, 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 up, it's up to us to promote each other. And I've been trying to think of ways to, you know, not not really rebrand, re but to, you know, come up with some ideas on where I want my, my channel to go. And, like a different approach to things. And yes. And the, the one thing that, that's added now is, is more vlogs. You know, I'm traveling around Georgia and a lot, a lot of people are, are you know, introverts. I'm, I'm, I, I think I'm, I'm more of an introverted extrovert because I, I, I want to be left alone at times. I want to be unbothered, un f word with the boo. But <laughs> I like people. I want to talk to people. Like, look, give me hug, family. But yeah. I'm alone. So um, I noticed a lot, a, a lot of my subscribers and friends are like that. And when I go out and seek out these adventures, you know, I want to share that with y'all because it's definitely an experience I want to share with y'all, but also too. I know people watch my channel and watch re and rewatch my videos, but I think I watch my videos the most because whenever I'm, I'm in a mood, I'll go back to this video, this moment, you know, those emotions I had at that time, that adventure, yeah. and, and get lost in it. Because I know one, one day I want to become an old lady. Um, I'm already there. I live in the South, so I now I call people honey dumpling and shit <laughs> cake and peach pie, and this is actually. Cider from Lane's Farm or uh, <laughs> Lane's Orchard, so I drink peach cider now. So, but I want to see my 100th birthday, and I know that my mind is not going to be all there, so I want to do document as much as I can. Yeah, like keep a like like a digital legacy for yourself. Yes, and for Absolutely. like your kids and grandkids. You know. Absolutely. What like what can you tell us? What has been something that you cherish about your YouTube journey? I cherish that I didn't give up on it. That's yeah. one thing. But also what I cherish is you can actually see your improvement if you mm -hmm. keep at it. Like I'm noticing like my improvement, especially when it comes to thumbnails. I'm like, oh my fucking goodness, these thumbnails are pretty funny. Yes. And I gotta thank you for telling because you, you helped me, you gave me constructive criticism. You know, what I mean? people out there, constructive criticism, take it. A lot of people yeah. don't take it. But I appreciate you. You gave me constructive criticism and like them thumbnails. I'm like, oh my goodness. But that's another thing I cherish about the YouTube and like the YouTube journey. And I get to meet other YouTubers like you. Y'all like you inspire me. I'm like, hell yeah. It's like, you know, to me, it feels like sports again. Like I used to play basketball. Mm -hmm. I was uh, you know, until high school. You know, I still play basketball for fun, but that's when the last time I played like organized basketball. Mm -hmm. And this gives me that feel again where I could have a sense of community or people that can understand me, you know what I mean? Instead of people out there in the world and sometimes they don't get what we go through. Right. As people doing YouTube or podcasting or creatively and stuff like that. So that that's what I cherish, you know, making new friends. You feel me? I met you through because of YouTube. Exactly. We are grown ups now because like my, my my most favorite neighbor just moved away and I'm like, man, I'm a bitch. Your neighbor. I'm like, we we're adults. I could just drive over there and see you. Yeah. We have social media. So yeah. it does bring you a sense of community. Like we're actually using social media smartly. You know what I'm saying? Like how some yeah. people are like, I cringe when, when people say, uh, I'm taking a break from Facebook. I'm like, why? I'm like, how? Like, I couldn't do that. That's how I, I get money. You know, I get yeah, my money. Exactly. Out of I ain't leaving. You know, the only time I, I, I leave and sit in Facebook jail when they want to ban me for stuff I did three years ago. <laughs> oh my God. You that shadow ban or the jail. You can't, you can't oh, post yeah. for 30 days. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the first, the first few times I went, it was from getting into arguments with people, but I'm like, you know what? W one, Thing that you should know uh, that I've learned before starting YouTube is that YouTube is social media and content. Like everything is a business. It's not personal. I mean, and, and, and I mean, some of the stuff is personal. It is personal. But for the if I look at it as a, a business and bleed the business while it's still available, you yeah. know, 
network with who I, I need to network, support who I need to support and who su supports me, but also keep it pushing. I have no time to argue with nameless trolls out there who are who are afraid to use their government name on social media. I mean, I got mine right there. <laughs> or that real picture. They be using cartoon avatars and stuff. Right, who just had, I'm like, there was a movie that came out in the 90s. Uh, I used to have a crush on Brandon Adams in, in the 90s, but he was in this movie called The Ghost in the Machine. So that, that is a good movie. That's what I call them, The Ghost in the Machine. So once you you look at this like, hey, this is where I, I make additional income. This is where I network. And the comments I get, the, the feedback, Taisha, I did not know about this, but you changed my life. My, mm -hmm. my, my wife, she was afraid of firearms, but when she watched your content, she now wants to go to the range. Yeah. Um, you spoke out about this. It changed my life. I actually had like a 14 year old, you know, reach out to me about the abuse from their, their, their parents, you know, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is, this is really getting serious. So the overall mission is what's important. So come on, exactly. can you tell us or give someone who's thinking about starting YouTube or who may be, you know, not at a certain point, can you tell them about your experience with the business of YouTube and the business of being a content creator? So from my experience, you can't take social media so serious. Most people on there just trolling anyway, for the most part. And you got to have some of that fucking attitude. You really got to be like, man, fuck them. I, I'm loved for real. I'm loved by real, actual people, you know? But at the same time, you do, you do need that the core of people to actually tell you what is what and also that helps support you through the journey mm -hmm. so that's all i have to say is like if you want to be a content creator if you want to do youtube just be and be ready for sometimes motherfuckers might even not watch your shit yeah like with two three views <laughs> I, I, had, I had a new sub in two weeks i'm still putting out content mm -hmm. it happens it's okay yes you know yes that's you have to just have that mentality. And, and it's then, like you have to have, have a purpose behind it. Cause it's like if you put out a video, like, oh, I'm I'm gonna go viral off of this, it ain't gonna happen. It's like no, no. I'll be out, out of nowhere. The videos that I just put up there, and I'm like, okay, this this video is here. I said I want to say I'm cool with it, I'm going to sleep. Next thing I know is taking off. I'm like, oh wow, that's what's up. Okay, so usually they say to double down on it. So I put it on. Yeah on a list to, to do something similar, but YouTube will start hating too because I had uploaded a video telling people like, hey, you can purchase ammunition online. And yeah. I went to sleep, I woke up, I woke up to like 26,000 views and I'm like, oh my gosh. And I wake up, I go to, back to sleep and a few days later, the joke is at almost 100,000 views. What happened when that joke hit 99,000? Uh, yeah. Pause and no more. It was YouTube hit the hell out of it. So, <laughs> yo, YouTube's a hater. Yo, that it, should be the, the title. YouTube. It was rolling. It was rolling. I was like, it's at ninety nine thousand views and skirt. It was done. But I'm like, hey, it's this what it is. So whenever I use firearms in my tags or something like that, yeah. um, I get the alert and then it you know sits in the shadow and it did get discouraging. Like I'll 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 be open with y'all for a second. For the past like couple months, well, this year of 2021, I have not been active as much with up uploading content. Because I didn't want to get sucker into being one of those YouTubers that cut the camera on at every time a trending topic comes up. That's not yeah. what I want to do. The shit's depressing. And it was actually one video where I was talking about a child that was pepper sprayed. And I actually had to stop in the middle of that video to go throw up because it, it was starting to make me sick in my stomach. I know these things are happening. I know these things yeah. are happening. And I just cannot sit by idly and watch them happen. But I know that there are other ways where I could be an asset and I can mm -hmm. also, you know, make things happen. It's just that I can't take it on all by myself. But I know that, that there are, are other people who are working. And so I just have to you know, I may not have to be that voice and be on camera talking about it, but I can definitely put in work behind the scenes. So that's one of the reasons why this year I haven't went live as much because it's like it was really taking a toll on me, just 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 bearing a lot of that. You know, we see what's happening. We get shadow bear for talking about it. We get the trolls to come in. 
on the comments that y'all don't see and, you know, call you the B word and the N word and stuff like that. And these accounts get to stay up. You can report them all you want. And I report stuff on Facebook and Instagram. It's like, oh, we looked into this and this is not a violation, but you can block the person. I'm like, well, they can still type this, but I call some, somebody, you know, a shortened version of a, of a particular animal. And I said, <laughs> the Facebook jail, but this person was acting like that. They was displaying the behavior. So I told them, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> you know, telling the truth. Come on. Have you noticed that it's, it's like you get penalized for telling the truth. It's like, you have to tell the lie. And I don't know how, how, I mean, I, it doesn't sit well with me, but have you noticed that? And how does that sit with you seeing that, where mainstream media and society wants us to go is to package it, package up pretty lies to tell the people. I I, I don't know if that, that makes sense now, but that's what, what I'm seeing. No, it does make sense. And I'm sick of that shit. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> like you try to tell the truth about stuff and it's just like <laughs> the, the silencing or the shadow banning is like, I know it, you know what it does sometimes it make you think like, yo, is there like-minded people like me out there? Are they really paying attention? You start doubting people out there that's like-minded, like you are want to pay attention to this type of content that they that you putting out there. Mm -hmm. You're telling the truth. Yes. So that's the way they try to discourage you to go back to that bubblegum stuff. You remember? You're like, hey guys. Yeah. For the dancing. <laughs> they want you oh my good. They be wanting you just to dance and just chuck and jive. That's what they want yeah. you to do. Yes, absolutely. And just just be wild and just go along with what they're putting out. I'm like, the celebrities, they actually pay because we, we've seen articles where influencers are being paid to push certain agendas and stuff. Yep. You see mm -hmm. who's being paid. It's like, wow, I see this. So if you don't get with the program, you you get silenced, you know? So yep. that's one thing that's kind of like... you. I know with us and, and other YouTubers and other content creators and those who support us, we we just have to work together to find other creative means mm -hmm. to let them know, like, hey, you do have have a community. No, you do not have to, you know, um, just bow and, and fall in line to that. You you can be an individual. You can stand on integrity. You can stand on morals and values and you don't have to sell yourself out or, you know, dumb, dumb down to fit in with, with, with the crowd. You don't. Yeah. The dumbing down that shit. Oh my God. Like it just gets so annoying. Cause it's just like, yo, like, why do I, as a minority, especially a black person, why do I got to dumb it down to gain an audience through social media? That's supposed to let you gain an audience through that. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, actually, what the fuck am I talking about? It does make sense. It's a system. It's working. They yeah. got it. Yeah. Y'all yeah. right. Y'all doing it. Right. <laughs> you, know, you, you know what? And you know what? It's just we have to. Yes, it gets us down. Yes. Because like I'll, I'll have an idea for a great video and I'm like, it ain't going to go nowhere. And I'll just get back in the bed. You know, or I'll just go <laughs> take a hike and drive somewhere. But. We we talked about uh movies and you you talked about yeah. movie reviews and shout out to our, our our brother just my opinion reviews uh we started YouTube around the same time and he does a great a great job with movie reviews TV reviews he even interviews big names so sh shout out to our brother just my opinion reviews please go and check him out so uh Kamal we, we were also talking about uh, about some movies some some throwback movies you know and one that came to mind that we just related to with, with our talks about YouTube and what our frustrations were and things like that was this movie called Idiocracy. Oh my goodness. I just saw it for the first time this year. Shout out to my sweetheart. We watched it together. I fell asleep while I watched it, but you can see <laughs> it right here on YouTube. It, it is a good ass movie. I was just tired that day. I was just tired. But yeah. You can watch Idiocracy free here on YouTube. And come on, it's I I know as soon as I said I said the name, you just started laughing. Can you yeah. tell those who haven't seen it, Idiocracy? Because me, I have a tendency to spoil it. But so if you can give 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 people a, a synopsis, an oversight, or or you know of what Idiocracy was about, and yeah, why that is so relevant to what's going on. So right now, I give y'all the clip notes. Yeah, the, the brief clip notes. Now, um, 
I, I haven't seen it in like three years, but <laughs> basically Idiocracy was, I think this dude, he was in a coma, right? They put him in or an ice uh, thing or something. They they, yeah, they 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 put him and uh the female played by mm-hmm. Maya Rudolph. Uh yeah. what's it? Luke Wilson or yeah, it's Luke Wilson and Maya Rudolph. They 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 participated in this army experiment that that's what it was into the future. Yeah. However, what had happened was during that time <laughs> the world just went the trash. I ain't said a cuss word the whole night. It went to trash. And it's so when they, they wake up, up, they see what the heck the world, you know, went to. <laughs> and it's yeah, just- it went to a bunch of idiots. People became so dumb. The president was like Terry Crews promoting yeah. like Mountain Dew as the, <laughs> was a drink of choice or it something like that. Like Brondo. I think it was Brondo. Brondo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it kind of correlates to what's going on now. Like, we have one of the most dumbest presidents. We ain't going to name her a name. He like Lord Valdemar. We ain't saying his name. But it's like the, such the idiocracy that's being put in front of our face and what we eat up and consume. That's what's being promoted. And in idiocracy, that's basically what was being promoted too. The dumbest people and the dumbest stuff that was going on was getting the most hype. And bruh, that guy was in the army experiment and came. He he was kind of slow too, and he like became president somehow. Just being, he was just a regular average Joe, didn't know anything, was dumb <laughs> as hell, and was like <laughs> literally became president. Yes. Oh my gosh, that actually inspired me because I thought I thought about doing another installment of, of of day evil it's just i've been slacking on that too i've just been like you know stuff is just too real and it's like this, this can't be happening but idiocracy as you notice he was wearing crocs you see everybody named mama wearing crocs now yeah. and just wear crocs at the house and it's why ugly shoes they're so ugly it's just this croc style that everybody wear now. It's like I thought that those were meant for like people who work in a hospital, so that you know if yeah. you have to get some on it, you 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 can disinfect it. I actually, I have two pairs of Crocs. I have some some um flip flop Crocs. They're really cute. Like people won't want all their Crocs unless they Crocs. But I I wear them because see where I'm at in life right now. I no longer wear cup cup. Uh, I don't know. I no longer wear come get me shoes. I wear catch me if you can. I got memory foam. I got art support. You know, I got a whole bunch of stuff going on. So catch me if you can. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> I, got the I got the Crocs wedge. I wear Skechers. You know, okay. yeah. I have to take take care of the feet. I'm a disabled. Well, Skechers are comfortable though. My toes. So yeah, I have to wear those, but they they are cute. They are presentable. Crocs okay. are just ugly. I mean, I I think that. Crocs should be worn by nurses mm-hmm. and little kids when they, they, they go to the beach. Because, you know, they don't know how to yeah. tie shoes up, you know, just put them on, on little kids. But mm-hmm. moms are just wearing Crocs. They wear the same outside Crocs around their house. And it's like, and you, you remember in Idiocracy, Frito's house, it was just a, a dump. <laughs> <laughs> Frito's fucking house. What the fuck, man? You you broke my house. <laughs> So we don't have to re- review that with spoilers and just get it. Or if if uh, another YouTuber that's 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 super cool. And one thing that has been great about YouTube is meeting other content creators yeah. who find a creative way to do things in their own way. Shout out to Prim Hood Cinema. And yes. Shout out to Bruh. Oh my goodness. He got me through my last few months living in Washington. And so when I was listening to something that, that, that you had uploaded, I'm like, you know what? Come on, check out Prim. And mm-hmm. oh my gosh, you said Prim, <laughs> you've been binging his channel. I binge watched it, you know? Cause I mean, like, one, his content is so funny and original. Two, it's my black black brother. I gotta support yeah. my black brother. And three. It's kind of like I'm also doing homework. Yes. Because he reviews movies so freaking well, and I review movies. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's like, it's good to see somebody that's in the same space as me doing exactly what I do, but does it in such a different way. But he looked like me and sound like me. Yeah. So it kind of yeah. inspired me to like go right back to the inspiration of doing YouTube. If it ain't on YouTube, Mm-hmm. I don't find somebody like him. Absolutely. 
if he would just stop doing it after his first video, he even said it like first videos he was getting, he was wasn't even getting no views, no subs, and then out the blue, just a bunch of subs, a bunch of views. And his he videos did. were getting taken down as well because of the whole fairy yeah. goose thing. So his videos were, were were getting taken down. And that's 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 kind of wild, you know, because yeah. we we do have a certain, you know, license, and you know, we we are allowed to critique certain stuff. So, mm -hmm. yes. Oh my gosh, I just listed in the chat. I listed um, uh, check out Prim's Hood Cinema. Tell tell them that Kamal and Taisha sent you. Check out our brother at Just My Opinion Reviews. And when you talk about movie reviews, what comes to mind is Hollywood Shuffle. One of my favorite directors, actors, Mr. Robert Townsend. Love him so much. And so I'm going to uh, segue us into, you know, you brought up, but our, our, our inspirations, those who inspire us, our motivation to keep going. And when I think, think about those, like, um, Robert Townsend. I think about um, the Wayans brothers. I think about, or the Wayans family. I'm sorry, the Wayans family, and some people like that who just, you know, carved their way into something, carved out their name, did things their their way, and 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 and, and as a result, it impacted the generations. I have this 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 uh, DVD here. Another content creator. Uh, Filmmaker, director, actor, extraordinaire, uh, the late Mr. Melvin Van Peebles. So, you know, just phenomenal. So I want to get into re reviewing films that, you know, mm -hmm. did not get their shine during their time, but I think they are worthy for, you know, the newer generations. Because a lot a lot of these films, my mom put me on to them. So, yeah. 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 Where are you coming from with as as far as or, or who inspires you? What do you do to keep the motivation? Because one, one thing I, I love about you is that you are consistent. OK, you are consistent. If you're going to upload on a Tuesday at two o'clock Pacific yeah. Standard Time, you upload on a two o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So yeah. your inspirations, motivations to keep pushing and creating content. My inspirations, like I said, like I'm inspired by like Deces and Zemiro, John Oliver. Then even other YouTubers, I'm inspired by you. I'm inspired by uh Prim Dewan B. Mm. Mm -hmm. Shout out to that brother, man. Inspired by him. Um, what else? What else? I'm inspired by. Sometimes books. You mm -hmm. know, inspired by books. Uh, a lot of movies and shows though. They inspire me because I'm like I know this took so much work to do this. Even if they're bad, if they're even fucking terrible movies and shows, it took a lot of work mm -hmm. to do this. I'm also inspired by uh, my first uh, roommate in college. He does feature films and been doing mm -hmm. it for 10 years. Mike Razzarotti, he, he know who I'm talking about. He Italian. He, he, he know how to say his last name or whatever. But I'm inspired by him too. And so the, the motivation comes from like, I always wanted to do this. So mm -hmm. I had the chance to do it. Why stop now? And also, I don't work like shitty jobs. I work at like, smart <laughs> yeah, look it. I work at Smart Final and clean doo-doo off the toilets. Yeah. I'm like, all right. It, what I'm doing now is just luxury compared to that. Or stocking shelves at Home Depot and stuff like that. Working overnights. Mm -hmm. that's my motivation and i'm like i do have the ear of some people and like that is going to keep me motivated and it's like like you like you said earlier if you treat it like a business you you treat yourself like like i'm a corporation mm -hmm. this is my stuff why would i be why would i drop anything late to my own thing or why would i like short short self myself yeah. I feel like when people cut corners and do things like that, they just shorten theirself in the end of the day and you represent yourself. So that's like my motivation, my inspiration when it comes to this, you know, what's yours though? Like what's your motivation, my motivation, the person who told me to start a YouTube channel and they just, they are the reason that I have all, all this here is my son. My son. Nice. So, 
hell yeah. Because mom, you can start a YouTube channel. Like you know a lot about everything. Like I can come to you. You always have have an answer. You you're willing to learn. You're my teacher, and I'm like, oh, well, thank you, Aww. boy. So yes, Aww. I started my YouTube channel. So I think about him, and it's it's as you said, a video may may get just a couple of views, but it'll come through like that one comment. I have our sister, some chick named Star. Our, our brother, Black Voltron, you know, people come out and say, hey, I really gained something of value. It's just those those out of the blue messages. That's what yeah. we're going. And so I'm like, if a video only gets one view, if if I was to dwindle down to one subscriber, I'm making videos for that one person, whoever needs this video whoever sought out this video whoever received something valuable from this video i made this video i have this channel for you you are the reason why i cut on the camera cone of lights you know whatever i do this for you yep and at the end of the day i feel great doing it. and as you said i've had some real shitty jobs yeah. the first <laughs> cut word of the night man i'm like oh. i've done everything from working at mcdonald's I was in the Navy. People think, oh, the Navy is so great. I had a video about being in the Navy. Shout out to our brother, Kareem. You know, we uh, served together. And I'm like, that was a real shitty job. I paid a lot of, uh, <laughs> I put in a lot of overtime and didn't get paid and dealt with a lot of bull. But uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all the way to wearing a gun and badge to feed, feed my son, you know. So it's like, yeah, I've been through some real shitty stuff. And if the, if the most I have to deal with is a video being de demonetized, it's a good day. It's, yeah. a good day. it's a good day. So a little bit of trolls here and there ain't hurt nobody. Like whatever. Talk what y'all want. We good over here. <laughs> Absolutely. But uh yeah, just just other content creators. Um, I listed uh some some here. I'm gonna do another video just you know highlighting and showcasing them because we uh we we kind of all we got, you know. Um once and once you said that there's certain certain YouTubers they that get a certain that attain a certain level of success, they forget where they came from. And you know, we all started somewhere with one subscriber. We all had to get that first subscriber. We all worked our, our way to being monetized. We all worked worked our way up to whatever whatever we got. And but also too, yeah. the things that we learn, we have to, we have to share with share with each other. We had a whole conversation about the business of YouTube. You know, some some things yeah. that I wish that I knew early on, like hey, before you upload that first video, okay. Yeah. Taisha Essence is now a business. Okay. We need to get organized, mm -hmm. save receipts. We need to, you know, get an accountant. We need to do all this stuff. But find out, find out later. You, you meet people that, that put you up, up on game and let you know what's going on. And then you take that and you network out. Like you are yeah. my, my network. You know, you are my community. So we, we put the information out there. People hit me up like, hey, I want to start a channel. I'm like, yeah, there are people who have these packages for a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars for you to get started. I'm just like, you know what? It's out there if you just look look for it. Yeah. And another thing that I, we need to touch on real quick is that uh, uh -huh. some of these professional time wasters. Cause uh, oh. yeah, I had some people hit hit me up <laughs> with a YouTube channel with two subscribers. I want to interview you. I'm like, okay, yeah, we'll do it. I appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'll talk to you, but I'm like what is your channel about like okay what's going on like what is your brand what is your business why do you want to talk to me like do you and you have to really guard your brand because you yeah. have those who want to just take you, your name and your image you know to try to push themselves up versus adding value to you in exchange you know it's it's, mm -hmm. it's even exchange so you're supposed to gain something from you know your connection so yeah, we have those professional time wasters. Oh my god, wasting everybody time. Jeez, I I don't get a lot of that on uh on YouTube, but on Instagram and like the social <laughs> media or whatever. Oh my, so many people just out there. They be just trying to scam though. That's what they be trying to do. It's a lot yeah. of scammers and a lot of people that's like like you say. A lot of those I, I bump into in like network events. So I got so good at vetting out people and being like, all right, I think they're going to waste my time. Or like sometimes I let them just fall into the trap. I like, okay, you see, I'm already consistent in doing what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. You let me know when you're ready. A lot of people don't, don't hit you back. They are, like I said, a lot of people wait till they see 
So your numbers going up, then they start hitting you, mm-hmm. and it's just like, wh- why do you want to? Why do you want to clap? You have they have nothing to show. Mm-hmm. Be just like, or a lot of people be asking me like, oh, how'd you how'd you start the YouTube or how'd you start the podcasting? And I point them in the right direction, but I can't hold your hand through it. You know why? Because yeah. I use YouTube and Google to also learn how to do things. Yeah. And when I, I feel like when I tell people that they kind of they feel like they feel like I'm a waste of time at that point. Oh, you yeah. waste my time. And it's like, no, I put in work. I, I did my own research, also getting help from other people. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you my, what I have and what I know what to do to help you. And then at the same time, it's like, okay, but I also use these tools that's out here for everybody. And that's one thing, too. If people want to jump into it, the whole, like, hey, here's this whole use. I want to get into it. There's steps. There's things that you got to go back and fix. It's a journey, you know, because my first videos were filmed with the Samsung Note 7, the exploding <laughs> phone. My first video, that that camera, that phone had the best dang on camera quality ever. I was so sad to turn money. And I was like, dang, this is some bull. But my first, my first videos was I had a photography backdrop, photography okay. umbrella lights, and my Note 7 on a tripod, you know? Yeah. And you, you grow, you evolve. But um, Exactly. Oh, oh, I want to okay. say one more thing. Also, it ain't going to be perfect your very first time. Have you... <laughs> if y'all play sports out there... Actually, if you've done anything, video games, sports, play chess, checkers, connect four. You know, when you first play Connect Four, you don't know what the hell you're doing. You're like, what the hell is this? And you lose most of the games. Then after a while, you get better. You get better through consistency. It's like practice, practice. Mm-hmm. That's that's I how I always say. It. Practice. Yeah. <laughs> practice. We talk about practice. Yes. Practice. practice. <laughs> yes, but the support, the support. If you can connect with your audience, be authentic, unapologetically you, and just stand firm in who you are. I, oh my gosh, you don't know who you will meet once you start being your, your yourself. If yeah. you're attracting the wrong crowd, you don't fit in, maybe it's because you're not being you. You're trying to conform and mm-hmm. fit into where you don't, don't belong. In this world of content creating, you carve out, you are the mold, okay? You are it. It's you. So don't try to force yourself. Like me, I'm, I don't care. I'm a square. I'm not going to fit in a circle, okay? I'm just going to yeah. sit over here and be the best damn square I can be. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Be the best square. Yeah, that's that how you have to be, though. Like, yo, everybody trying to be a freaking circle. Be a square. Be the best that you could be. You'll find you'll find other squares. You'll find other squares and make a whole rectangle and all types of stuff. Yeah. I don't know how we got the shapes, but. <laughs> cool and chilling with, with your fellow squares. It's a community for you, and someone's looking for you, as a matter of fact. Can you that- tell us uh, what you are doing, how people can find you? Tell us a little bit more about your podcast and what you're doing over there as well. So uh, this is all about you. Spotlight on you, your elevator speech, your brag time. On my pitch. All right, so basically my podcast is the same as, as my YouTube. So what mm-hmm. I, like, I was doing YouTube, and I was like, why not just conform the audio file and make it a podcast also? So I did that, and basically the podcast has certain sound effects that we'll have on there or certain music that it might be on there that you can't play on YouTube because of copyrights. Right. Or it might be like I'm in post-editing, I'm putting the sounds in there compared to on YouTube where – the one show I have with one of my best friends, uh, Frank, the Magic Think Tank, we go live on there. So I can't put those sounds in there. But the beauty of that is if you see us live, we show certain news articles, we show certain topics, certain tweets. So you can't see that on the podcast. So it kind of go hand in hand and give you like, all right, if I like listening to the audio and it has certain sounds and stuff like that, boom, we had a podcast for you. Mm-hmm. If I want to watch it, and see certain things that I can't see on a podcast, have the YouTube for you. And mm-hmm. then I have the other show, which is my baby. It's about, oh my goodness, The Gab. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
I had yeah. that podcast you know, over there. Yeah, yeah. It's been uh, it's about to be a year. Uh, January like first, a whole year. Wow, that show. Congrats. Yeah. And I love that show because like I actually do get people over there telling me like, oh yeah, you you inspire me. Like you, I learned from you. I learned some things mm-hmm. and things in that nature. And I'm like, that's the point of the Gab show. You know, it's like it's giving my perspective of the world and news that a lot of people probably like don't want to research it itself. Uh, I know a lot of people don't want to read the Forbes, Wall Street Journal, or Washington Post, but they want to know what the fuck going on around the world. Yeah. So they got me. You gotta break it down. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh the uh podcasting the um you can find me either type in Kamal Johnson ENT that's where my channel pops up. So I have a podcasting channel. Um, and that took a while to kind of set up and stuff like that, but I got it set up. So, uh, yeah. But, um, if you heard you that. Type in that, or you could type in the gap or the magic think tank. Okay. Whichever, whichever one y'all want to do for the pod. And then for YouTube it's Kamal Johnson ENT. And then the uh, shows fall under that umbrella. So I appreciate y'all. You feel me? I appreciate you, Taisha. Isn't this your your first live? Is this it on your Kamal Johnson channel? No, I've been going live for like uh, three months now. Okay, perfect. Congrats, congrats. Welcome to the world. Welcome, welcome, welcome over here with the cool ones. With the cool ones. Hey. (laughs) Oh, I I did have a a question for you before we go out because this actually was um. Something I think would be important for most content creators, actually, just most people in general, because mm-hmm. I know you were in Washington and that environment would seem kind of toxic and it seemed kind of, you know, it was just a big just cluster fuck out there or whatever. And then you moved to Georgia and it seemed yep. like you became more in your peace. You mm-hmm. became more within yourself, within your essence, you see, you're, even within your videos, you seem happier and you show us more like historical black things and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I just want you to answer the question, like how important it is to have a, a peaceful environment or create that peaceful environment for yourself to like progress, like in a positive way or in the right way of life. So that is a wonderful question. And thank you so much for noticing that because there's yeah. been, I've had to put in the work. Oh my gosh. The work from, finances i moved out here to georgia on my own drove the 2700 miles to get out here you know i took y'all on that that journey that the videos on my channel mm-hmm. oh my gosh coming from a place where i was really hyper vigilant all the time i was experiencing you know toxic work environments where there was discrimination illegal things going on like i was a one woman i fought a battle at work and when I came home and the only piece I had was at, at home. And that's when I was able to cut on the camera, escape for a, a little bit. And yeah. then that was my, my piece. Y- YouTube has been my saving grace mm-hmm. because I didn't have to talk, talk about things that happened at work. And I, I mean, I would talk about things that was going on, but I still had to find a creative way to do it because you don't want to always hear somebody present their problems. You want to say, Hey, what are you doing about it? Or what, how, how can I be of service to get you out of it? But um, making this, this, this move to Georgia has been absolutely amazing because guess what? I am the first thing I can say in my life, I am, I am the true Taisha. Yeah. I'm not petty officer Essex. I'm not officer Essex. I'm not, you know, whatever, I have to be to survive, you know, I can come here and go to the range and stress the importance of being a hard target, but do it in a creative fashion. Yeah. Having a peaceful environment to think and to turn off the survivor mode, like I'm still a hard target, but to turn that off and to share with you me going out to explore. I, I don't fear, I don't fear anything but snakes. Okay. There's a lot of snakes (laughs) and gators out here. But, you know, finding my community, um, l- learning more about me, this being in my essence, I don't know. It just is so much. And I think over the course of time, I'll be able to tell you exactly what it is. But I want to encourage people to go where you are happy. Mm-hmm. It's not 
it's not normal to lay in bed at night and think about your defenses for the next day. It's not right to wake up thinking about and having anxiety and panic attacks about what's what might happen throughout the day. Yeah. It's not cool to bite your tongue, you know, mm -hmm. and the things that you can't say and, and who you can be or whatever, or the, the repercussions. So it's, 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 it's everything to me. My studio right here, you know, when I see it, I sit here, I think about things, have my dry erase board, I can jot down ideas, yeah. pay my Georgia taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you got to pay your taxes. And, got to. You know, your home office and do stuff like that. But it's great because when people meet me in, in person, like, I don't tell people, like, hey, I'm Taisha Essex. I'm a YouTuber, owner of Time Modest Defense Solutions. I don't say nothing to that. I'm like, hey, I'm just uh, Taisha. And then when they go and find me on social media, like, what? This is you? This I'm like, I'm not bragging. It's that's just it, it came as a result of being unapologetically me yeah. being a, a asset to the community that invests their most valuable resource, their their time, their most valuable asset, their time in me. So I just mm -hmm. want to be of service and give you some value and also, you know, just be me. Be me. <laughs> that, yeah. That's the best I can explain it. Hopefully I it it a it a I'll find the words in the future, but you know, I want to bring you content to to just just show you this this journey and how you need to take control of things. Hell yeah. Woo. <laughs> I tried. I tried. Hell oh. yeah. Like yes, we've been on for an hour, and I just want to say I really appreciate you. Like I said, you have have taught me consistency, how to be myself. You know, when when there's something I want to talk about, deliver it. Don't copy anybody else. Deliver my message how I'm going to deliver my message, and that's what I get from you. And I appreciate you trusting me when you have a question about something. We talk about it and, you know, we could come to a solution and, you know, I'm happy to have a seat here to cheer you on as you, you know, accomplish great, great things. You hit milestones and I'm, I'm happy that San Diego YouTubers brought us together. I didn't accept that job in San Diego, but I got a whole family. So that is where yeah. <laughs> it's even better. Yes. I did not accept the job out there. I came to Georgia where I wanted to be. Hell yeah. That is, that is great. I want to also extend an invite to you to come back. You know, we could talk about some, some movies. Uh, that's one thing, too, is just finding things to make you smile. That's been a great thing because I think I laugh, keep them crying, but you got to constantly <laughs> see out and laugh about some stuff. So yeah. I definitely want to invite you back over. I want to talk, talk about some movies that I've been watching, such as Idiocracy. One mm -hmm. of the movies I wanted to review last year was Brewster's Millions. Okay. I just saw that for the first time last year. So, yes, I want to bring you over just to, you know, bring this lighthearted side over. And I'm here. If you have anything you want to share with my audience, we could, you know, uh, put it out over here as well as on your channel. And yeah. we just, just grow because I am proud of you. And I'm happy to be your YouTube sister. Okay. <laughs> hey, I appreciate you. Thank you. Any final words for your subscribers who are, are watching and also mine as well? Looking for my subscribers, go subscribe to Taisha, please. Go do that ASAP. No Rocky. That's and, <laughs> and look it. Yes. I think I'm like this. Go eat a fish taco for me too, because you are three hours back. So I'm gonna let you enjoy the rest of your evening. Just want to say shout out to everybody who is watching tonight live. Shout out to some some of my 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 family. My family is what we are. We are family, okay? Black Black Voltron, Brother Kareem, Captain PY2, some chick named Star. Who else we got in here? Some more BP. Oh my gosh, I really appreciate y'all. Like y'all yeah, just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking for the term. Y'all are my moderator. So thank, thank you to y'all. Shout out to everybody uh, who will watch this later and leave a comment. If you, you have a channel or you have a question or constructive criticism for someone who's watching, who may be thinking about starting a channel, who may be, you know, looking for their community, leave them a comment, put your, your comments so they can click on your thumbnail, go to your channel and, and check you out because it's all about network. We have to promote our, our ourselves. Okay. 
Exactly. That's all I got for y'all. Come on, I want to say thank you to you because it's been a couple of months since I went live. Like I said, I'm just waiting for the spirit yeah. to move me, and, and I'm <laughs> like, I don't know. But this this has been great. I I really enjoyed this. So you've done great great things for me. So I am going to have some some other great content creators. We're going to go live. I want to promote them because in the meantime, while I've not been in front of the camera, I've been reading. Um, mm -hmm. supporting other content creators such as our sister, some chick named Star. Uh, if you remember the video I did on um, Instagram when the dude rang the doorbell and said he wanted to kill the chick, I had on her, her shirt. Uh, yeah, so we have some great business-minded people in our, our, our network, so let's support each other. I will see y'all in the next video. We've been going for an hour. I thank y'all for this late night video, and this is absolutely fun. Um, and I'll catch y'all in a couple of days. Have a great week, a great Wednesday. And that's about it. I'll see y'all. Peace out, y'all. Appreciate y'all. Have you. a great 